Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Roberts, owner and financial advisor at Property Apprentice. Join us today for the Week in Review, where I talk about current events for the everyday investor and home buyer. And this will be the last Week in Review for 2023, while we take a short break over the Christmas and New Year period. We'll be back online around the middle of January. Our topics for this week, first up from the Mortgage Mag on the 12th of December, DTI is still in the melting pot. Second topic from News Hub, 13th of December, CoreLogic reveals best places in New Zealand to own a house in 2023, property report. Third topic from Good Returns on the 13th of December, housing market still at a low ebb despite lift in sales. Fourth topic from One Roof on the 11th of December, interest rate hikes, you ain't seen nothing yet. So first up this week from the Mortgage Mag on the 12th of December, DTI is still in the melting pot. Finance Minister Nicola Willis is awaiting guidance from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, the RBNZ, on the potential implication of debt-to-income or DTI restrictions. DTIs are considered complementary to the existing loan-to-value rule, the LBR tool, which limits lending to home buyers with a 20% deposit and investors with a 35% deposit. There are some exceptions to that with speed limits on the amount of lending that banks can do above 80% for home buyers and above above 65% for investors and also some exemptions from those rules as well. Although DTIs don't require government approval, the RBNZ traditionally consults with the finance minister before introducing new tools. The RBNZ contends that if DTIs had been introduced pre-COVID, fewer borrowers would be facing challenges with higher interest rates today. While DTIs can be implemented without government approval, Willis has not been approached by the central bank regarding their plans, and she refrains from commenting until further discussion. Despite this, the National Party has expressed a preference for DTIs. A recent RBNZ article argues that DTIs are crucial for financial stability in maintaining sustainable house prices with a lesser impact on first home buyers compared to investors. Banks have been notified to be ready for DTIs by April 2024. A Bank of International Settlements case study supports the effectiveness of DTIs in curbing debt levels compared to other macroprudential tools. The study on macroprudential policies by Chris McDonald notes that LVR restrictions have enhanced household and lender resilience with housing-related risks being a significant concern in the New Zealand financial system. Prior to the implementation of LBR restrictions in 2013, higher risk lending had increased, leaving banks vulnerable to housing risks. The median house price is now nine times the median household disposable income, a result of lower long-term interest rates and substantial population growth. While LVR restrictions have been adjusted throughout property cycles, tightening them has only shown limited and temporary effects on house price inflation, according to the article. The RBNZ acknowledges that LVR restrictions may impact lending to creditworthy borrowers and have unintended consequences on housing supply and competition between banks. Despite these challenges, they have helped boost borrower resilience during economic fluctuations. Second topic for this week in review from News Hub on the 13th of December, CoreLogic reveals the best places in New Zealand to own a house in 2023, property report. New Zealand's property market in 2023 is characterised as a year of two halves by CoreLogic, as outlined in their report titled 2023, a turning point for the New Zealand housing market. The report covers the past year and predicts trends for 2024, including data on New Zealand suburbs that experienced the highest and lowest property value changes. Areas that defied the slow property market trend and saw the highest average value increases over the past 12 months include Sunshine Bay in Queenstown at an increase of 6.6%, Kororo in Greymouth at 3.9% increase, and Lake Hayes Estate in Queenstown up 3.8%. 3.8%. In contrast, some areas experience drops in value, with Featherston recording the most significant decrease at 16%. Over the past five years, Mataura at Gore saw the highest increase in property value at 138.9%, followed by Ratihi or Ruapehu and Wairua. 
Notably, three Auckland suburbs near the CPD were the only ones to lose value over, the, over this period. And the most expensive suburbs in 2023 were still in Auckland, with Hearn Bay leading at 3161400 while the most affordable areas included Cobden and Greymouth at 258200 and Blaketown and Greymouth at 277750 CoreLogic's report highlighted a shift in market conditions in the middle of the year, driven by changes in credit cost and mortgage availability. The rebound in 2023 is attributed in part to a surge in net migration, reaching a record high of over 128,000 individuals. Looking ahead to 2024, CoreLogic predicts an underwhelming upturn with factors such as the labour market and mortgage repricing processes influencing the market. While the new year may bring positive sentiment, the report suggests that investments may not surge due to low rental yields and high mortgage rates. CoreLogic anticipates a modest increase in sales and a growth of around 5% in property prices below long-term average levels. If you'd like to learn more about investing in property, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. I'll discuss strategies for successful investing from my perspective as an experienced investor and also a financial advisor. And these events are available live online or in person. Check out propertyapprentice.co.nz for upcoming dates and register today. We don't sell property, so it's all about increasing your knowledge to reduce your risk. If you've already been to one of our free events and you'd like to find out more about how we can help you to reach your financial goals, you can also book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, via the website, propertyapprentice.co.nz. Third topic for this week in review from Good Returns on the 13th of December, housing market still at a low ebb despite lift in sales. In November, the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand, REINZ, reported a 15.7% month-on-month increase in property sales, reaching 6,422 and a 12.2% increase year-on-year compared to November 2022. However, this figure marks the lowest November sales since 2011, except for last year, and sales were below 7,000 for a November month since 2013 excluding November 2022. Looking at regions, only three out of 16 experienced a month-on-month drop in property sales, with West Coast leading at negative 5.6%. Meanwhile, Nelson saw a substantial month-on-month increase at 51.3%, followed by Tasman at 32.8%, and Wellington at 31.1%. The national median sale price slightly increased by $1,000 to $790,000, but there's a 2% year-on-year decrease from $806,000. Excluding Auckland, the median sale price decreased by 1.4% year-on-year to $700,000 from $710,000. Days to sell remained at 38 days compared to the previous month and decreased by three days year-on-year. The West Coast stood out with a 17.4% month-on-month increase in the median sale price. At the end of November, the total number of properties available for sale was 28,014, which is down 1.5% year-on-year. Nationally, new listings increased by 5.2% year-on-year. Gisborne experienced a significant 75% month-on-month increase in new listings. The House Price Index, or HPI, showed a 0.8% increase compared to October, but a 0.2% decline year on year. The average annual growth in the New Zealand House Price Index over the past five years has been 6.1% per annum, still 13.8% below the peak in 2021. REINZ Chief Executive Jean Baird showed a, noted a slow and steady improvement in property market activity post-election, anticipating a resurgence in activity from the end of January as market positivity boosts confidence further. Despite the variations in median prices, she encourages buyers to act, expecting more competition in areas with increased listings. Topic number four from One Roof on the 11th of December, interest rate hikes, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here are the key insights into New Zealand's housing market from CoreLogic economist Calvin Davidson for the week. Number one, mortgage lending environment. 
the mortgage lending environment in New Zealand is showing signs of recovery in the overall loan activity, particularly from a low base. First home buyers are dominating the low deposit lending segment, and despite significant increases in interest rates over the past two and a half years, there's no apparent mortgage repayment stress. The total value of existing mortgages is $354 billion, with the overall property stock estimated at $1,585 billion, indicating substantial equity on paper. However, caution is advised as 54% of current loans are fixed and within the next 12 months, many are due for rate repricing, potentially onto higher rates. Number two, preference for short-term fixes. The data from the Reserve Bank reveals that 72% of new lending in October covering house purchases, bank switches and top-ups was fixed for up to two years. This reflects preference for shorter term fixes, possibly due to the belief that mortgage rates have peaked or are close to peak levels, which I think is a wise choice because it would be stupid to choose a long-term fixed interest rate at the peak of the market. Number three, tenant challenges. Rent price data for November to be published by Stats New Zealand is expected to show another significant increase, continuing the trend seen in October where the figure was 6.1% higher than the previous year, still lower than inflation. Factors contributing to this include rising wages, strong migration, population growth, and a relatively limited availability of rental properties. Number four, focus on net migration. While setting new records may not continue de indefinitely, there is a likelihood that net inflows of people to New Zealand have remained high. Even if migration figures start to weaken, the country's already experienced a substantial net increase of 119,000 migrants compared to the previous year. Number five, GDP figures and economic caution. Quarter three GDP figures to be published on Thursday by Stats New Zealand may show a quarterly rise of approximately 0.3 to 0.5%. Despite potential growth in quarter three, recent data has raised concerns and the next 12 months could see patchy overall economic performance emphasizing the need for caution in the housing market. My thoughts on this are, if you're buying a property for the long term, whatever's happening in the economy has little effect on your long-term plans. You need to make sure that you're managing your interest rates and uh, have a good mortgage advisor that can help you through that process. Also vital that you're purchasing the property that is appropriate for your financial position. It's when people buy the wrong type of property that they get themselves into some serious financial custard. While the new year may bring positive sentiment, the report suggests that investments may not surge due to low rental yields and high mortgage rates. However, I would suggest that with a limited number of listings um, then and limited lum number of rental properties, rents are likely to continue to increase and interest rates being high at the moment, that's a temporary issue rather than the permanent issue, which is your purchase price. So I suspect that house prices are likely to continue to increase. I'm not expecting them to increase at a massive rate in the short term, but, you know, stranger things have happened. And uh, certainly over the long term, the property values are highly likely to increase over the long term. Elevate your skills and expertise with our upcoming How to Succeed with Property Investing event. We're here to power up your potential. As an experienced property investor and a licensed financial advisor, I'll be sharing valuable insights and expert tips to help you on your journey. And I'm rewriting the entire event to kick off the new year with the latest information. And um, my plan is to make it as up-to-date and informative as possible for you. Our free events cater to all levels of property investors as well as home buyers. And I'll also tell you about how we can help our clients to achieve their financial goals. So if you're interested in finding out more about what we do, visit propertyapprentice.co.nz today to, to secure your spot and register for our events. Alternatively, book a no obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, through our website. Thanks for listening and tune back in around the middle of January. However, over the Christmas period, we do have some bonus podcasts for you. So I hope you enjoy, have a fantastic Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year.